I am so excited to be up here uh, getting to share the word um, this morning with you. And I have a special guest here with me this morning, um, Chris Morgan. And he's, we're going to share a little bit of his story. And some of you may, may or may not know um, Chris, but Chris has been on a, an incredible journey. Um, the Lord has led him through some amazing things. In fact, um, quite frankly, and not to give, give away, but... Uh, he shouldn't even be here with us today, and the Lord has done an amazing work there. So um, we're going to—it's going to be a little bit different this morning, but we're going to talk through um, just some, some avenues and some, some things that the Lord has been present in Chris's life, and then also um, apply it to the rest of our, our lives as well. So let me—actually, I didn't turn that on for you. I apologize. Um, so, Chris, give, give the, everyone just a quick introduction, um, who, who you are, and, um, and some about your story. Perfect. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to the church. I would not be here today without the prayers that y'all gave me. Um, my name is Chris Morgan. I'm an Air Force veteran. Uh, was injured in Saudi Arabia and medically retired in 01 after I had a traumatic brain injury and had a brain bleed and developed epilepsy and migraines. Uh, I fought depression about 10 years, um, found woodworking as being very therapeutic for me. So I started a, a veteran nonprofit and I started building wooden American flags and uh, crosses and that absolutely changed my life. Until just recently, um, God presented another path for me and uh, I'll get into that in just a sec, so. Love it, love it. So, um, as you, you may have realized and noticed out on the Circle Drive, uh, your, your vehicle, and that's uh, uh, with that organization, um, and we'll get into that here in a little bit too. But, um, so, as you retired medically um, and, and were, got out of the service, tell, tell us a little bit about your journey with the Lord um, after that. I know you said you fought depression, but, but where, where were you until most recently? Um, kind of walk us through that, that journey with the Lord. Uh, yeah, I, uh, honestly, I lost a little direction with the Lord during the, uh, during the depression. I had a lot of doubt. Um, I was baptized as a young kid, and I just, I lost that direction, and uh, Megan Burtwell invited me here into the church. Um, that day, you preached, and it touched me so much that, that I just said I had to meet the Lord again. I had to, I had to stand back up, um, get on my feet again, and you changed my life that day, that, that direction. And um, Praise the Lord. two weeks ago, I came in here and got baptized. That's right. That's right. So, love that. Love that. So, some of you may or may not know all of Chris's story. And um, so, in June, right, uh, he had another brain injury. And, and that's when the Lord really uh, showed himself to you and, and really walked you through some uh, pretty dire times and pretty um, drastic moments. Um, tell tell a, a little bit about what actually what in yeah in June it was actually a heart attack. Okay, um, oh, that's right. in the middle of the night, my service dog Andy uh, woke up and she jumped on my chest three times, and that was something I'd never seen on her. I've had her three years now, so we're still learning one another, but. Uh, her bouncing on my chest, I was like, oh, we, she really has to go to the bathroom, I guess, at 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so I got up, took her, or uh, got ready to go outside, and three minutes after she notified me, I collapsed in my bathroom at a massive heart attack. She even brought me my cell phone so I could call 911. Uh, got to the hospital. They had to put two stents in. And I started my recovery from that heart attack. And, um, but one thing with my heart attack was they gave me blood thinners and I was not used to those whatsoever. And um, unfortunately, about a month later, I uh, got up in the middle of the night and I was disoriented and I collapsed in my bathroom again and I f hit my head on, um, on the bathtub. And thankfully something 
told me to have my son come and stay the night because I was fighting a migraine and I was really confused and so I had my son come and uh, that night when I fell I actually was able to walk to him and get to him and tell him hey son something happened I just fell in the bathroom and he said okay well I'll get you to the hospital and uh, loaded me up in the car after a fight because I had to get my cell phone charger and all sorts all, of things. All the things, that, yeah. And he's like, Dad, we need to get you to the hospital. And so he got me to the hospital, and by the time we got to um, Integris, I was really bad off. I couldn't walk a straight line. I was very wobbly. Um, we got in there and started checking in, and I actually looked at my son, and I said, why did you kidnap me? And he was like, son, what? Or, or dad what what are you talking about I had totally lost thought on who he was I had no idea that was my son I thought I was kidnapped uh, about 10 minutes later I was officially in a coma mm, man and so you've seen the Lord working miracle after miracle in your life and and here you are um, just surviving a heart attack and and now you're in the hospital um, in a coma and and so when you came to, like, we have some p pictures uh, of, of kind of that journey, but um, walk us through what, what that was like in the, in the hospital and um, what you remember of that. Yeah, I, I really don't have much memory. Um, three weeks I was out. Um, I had a massive brain bleed. They had to remove my left side of my skull uh, to relieve the pressure. And the surgeon prepped my son and my family and friends and said, he's not going to survive this surgery. It, it's, uh, his damage is just too bad. And when, he came out, when I came out of surgery, the, the surgeon then said, well, uh, when I removed his skull, his brain was throbbing. And I've personally never seen that before, the surgeon said. And... Um, said it's very unlikely that he's even going to wake up. Um, two days later, they attempted to wake me up, and, and the doctor again prepped my family and said, if you do wake up, or if he does wake up, he's not going to walk or talk again. There's just way too much damage. So they removed that ventilator, and I immediately said a word, and the doctor was just blown away. Uh, the next day... Uh, they came in and said, well, we need to try to get him up and walk because we just don't know if he's going to be able to do that. So they set me up in the bed, and they said, well, do you want to walk? And I said, absolutely. So they stood me up, and I did three laps around the ICU. Just blew the doctors away. And, and I remember, I, I, I don't know if that was a Saturday or a Sunday that you took those steps, but I remember actually being here in the back hallway, and um, we've been praying for you for, for a little bit of time now, and, and um, I was asking, and uh, then was shown this, this picture right here, and I, I was in complete amazement of what the Lord was able to do, you know, after doctors have said, you know, there's nothing else. If he wakes up, um, probably not going to speak, probably not going to um, talk, and the Lord wasn't done um, with you. So um, as, as miracle after miracle um, that the Lord has walked you through, kind of— um, what, what other things has the Lord revealed and allowed you to speak into um, medical professionals uh, yeah. as they're dumbfounded? We know it's the Lord at work. We know the Lord is doing something in you, and obviously he's not done with you yet um, to walk this journey. But what, what have you been able to speak into um, some of the medical professionals? Yeah, so I lost uh, my left hearing, my left ear. And a little vision in my right eye. I, I don't have my peripheral. And um, so the VA said, well, you need to go see an eye doctor and an ear doctor. And uh, my mom and I walked into the ear doctor. And as soon as he walked in, he said, wow, God's not done with you. I said, no, sir, he's not. And uh, one thing that the VA doesn't do enough of is uh, at the end of that appointment with him, he had told me, you're more than likely not going to get your hearing back. There's just maybe a 1% chance, but we'll put you on a steroid and uh, try to get
get that to entice your hearing. And um, so I'm sitting there at the end of the appointment. He said, would you mind if I pray for you? That's amazing. I said, absolutely. Please do. Um, that's what's gotten me here now. And, and he said a beautiful prayer, um, thanking my mom for making the trip to, from Kentucky to help take care of me while I recover. And um, so afterwards, we, I had to go see. I, the steroids didn't help whatsoever. Just two days ago, I went to see to get my hearing aid. And we get to the VA, and I get into the appointment. And it was a really weird morning. I, I was kind of like fuzzy on this side where I had no hearing. And I get into the appointment, and they put me in that chamber and do the testing and everything. And the doctor comes in afterwards, and she just burst into tears. And I was like, is it that bad? And she goes, <laughs> no, it's that good. She said, I had to call another doctor in here to review your, your uh, test results. Chris, you have 100% hearing in that left ear, and you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. The surgeon actually, when he removed my skull, he caused so much nerve damage in there it's scientifically not right that I have hearing and that was another blessing from God and all the prayers that my family and and you guys are are giving me it's just I can't put into words the thanks that I have I love it I love it in fact um that that amped me up uh Whenever you call me right after, he's like, you won't believe and yet another miracle that the Lord has done and, and shared that news with me um, just a couple days ago. And incredible as, as the Lord continues to um, give you opportunity to speak into things that aren't scientifically possible, but we serve a God that surpasses all science. We serve a God that, that uh, is beyond all um, human knowledge and book smarts, because doctors are that, but... Um, a God that even can, can dumbfound um, some of the smartest uh, folks. So you're you're continuing to to uh, make make progress, uh, continuing to um, stump doctors and, and getting to share about what the Lord. Um, what what about your story? I know there's a lot of special things about your story, but what, what is something about your story that um, you would love to impart upon um, us today? Uh, if, if there was like a, a, a tagline or I know the Lord's not done with you and, and, and allowing you the opportunity to minister to several people, veterans, um, doctors, and, and all that, what, what would be um, your word of encouragement for his Absolutely. people Absolutely. You may at some point in time just— I hate to say it, but lose a little faith, lose a little direction. I wouldn't say that this was really a wake-up call for me. I mean, I, he blessed me in so many ways uh, throughout the years. And even in the Depression, he always gave me sense. And all it was was to make me stronger. And it's hard to say, uh, but I think my faith now is the absolute strongest it's ever been because, again— the doctors have confirmed it's not scientifically correct for me to even be here and alive again. And one other thing I want to say is I prayed to God that I want to golf again. Please, I want to golf again. And I was still in the hospital at, at that time. And uh, so I asked them, once they decided to say that you can go home and be with your family, I said, well, when can I golf? And he said, oh, you can tomorrow. He said, but you're going to learn your limitations, and you may only be able to go there and chip and putt, do something that's very small. Um, you might play one hole one day and go back and play two holes. And so the third day, Mom, that I, the third day that I got home from the hospital, I went with friends, and I played all 18 holes. Man. So... What I, what I love about, about your story is really the, the whole journey of, you know, the, the Word promises us that He'll never leave us, never forsake us, always going to be there, and, and has something in store for us. As long as we're living, I mean, He he's, wants to use us. And so 
just to hear your story. Now you're able to go to the golf course. You're able to um, do so many things. I know you're learning your limits, but really the Lord being there and, and being able to cherish every, every moment of every day um, and looking for the opportunities that the Lord is, is working and giving you the opportunities. Um, real quick, because I know I, I got asked already um, about the vehicle and the drive, which you're driving it now. Um, got your driver's license back and on all the things. That's another thing. I wasn't supposed to get my driver's license for six months. And what was it, 10 days, Mom? Two weeks. Two weeks he called and said, yep, you can have your driver's license back. I was, I was supposed to have all kinds of seizures when I was being, uh, during the beginning of my recovery and, I never had one seizure. Praise the, the doctor Lord. was blown away. Again. Man, God is, God is good. God is good. Briefly, talk about uh, veteran flags by vets and, and what the Lord has uh, called you into doing as, as this is your ministry. Absolutely. And, uh, so I uh, found woodworking as being very therapeutic for me. And it hit me that, oh my gosh, I can bring vets out here to my house teach them how to build their own wooden flag that they get to take home in hopes to save one of the veterans' lives. Um, at, on my logo at the bottom, you see the number 22. 22 veterans kill themselves every single day. And it's my path now that I'm trying to find veterans here locally and nationally to bring them in to build these flags in hopes to find a direction for them in life again. And I get them out of that depression and anxiety and everything that we all fight. So, uh, yeah, I started Veteran Flags by Vets, and it's been going great. I started in January of this year, and uh, I do have some crosses and flags that I'm going to present today. And, um, yeah, it's a great thing. I've, I've helped. I think I have had 31 veterans over so far. And 22 of those, and that number means the world to me, 22 of those have came back to mm -hmm. help me prep for the next class and so, so forth. So, so it good. is changing lives. And, and what, yes. And what I love is many of them are in the shape of a cross. So you're able to minister to them and then also share about what the, lo the Lord has done in you and through you. So um, thank you so much for sharing your story with us uh, this morning. Uh, let's, give, let's give them another round of applause for what? Chris and what the, the Lord is continuing to do in his, his life. Um, Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And as talking with Chris over the last several weeks um, in preparation for this morning, the Lord really hit me with this every moment and every day thought, this, this mentality of, um, you know what, may, maybe most of us don't have a story like that, but the Lord is still at work in, in, in our lives if, if we just open our eyes to it. And, and the fact that uh, each day that the Lord gives us is, is a gift. It's an opportunity to be about what the Lord has for us. So if you have your Bibles this morning, they'll be on the screen as well. But um, we're going to be in James chapter 4 really briefly and look at what this, this idea, continue to look at this idea of what the Lord has in store for us each and every day if we open our eyes and open our minds to what he has. So James chapter 4, starting in verse 13, it says, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What, what is your life for? It is a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. What I love about this passage of Scripture in verse 14 is that we don't know what tomorrow has. We don't know what, what tomorrow will, will bring. We're not promised another moment. We're not promised another day. And what, what we see here in the Word of God is saying, don't go and make plans. And I know some type A people in this place are going to be like, whoa, I check my calendar every 43 minutes and I can't stand it if, if something's not on there. I'm not saying don't make any plans. I'm not saying just to throw the calendar out and throw any organizational stuff out the window. But what I'm saying is how many times do we focus so much on the calendar going from one thing to the next and, and missing the moments that are right in front of us? How many, how many times do we get so 
focused in on well, this is gonna be happening and then next I've gotta to go to this thing and this thing and this thing. That happened to me even this week while, while preparing this message. There were so many different things that I felt like I was just constantly on the go. And, and though we only have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, it's something just about every night. So whenever I read this text and, and then I have to fight through the, the not being tied down by all this stuff and say, you know what? I'm gonna embrace the moment that the Lord has given me. I'm gonna embrace today and what the Lord is doing right in front of me and not miss the Lord. Now, I don't wanna miss his presence because I'm so preoccupied by all the things going on around me. Mother Teresa said it uh, well when, when she said, Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We only have today, so let us begin. She says, let's focus on what the Lord has given us in this moment. Be present in the moment and live it out. Truly cherishing the, the, the time that we've been given and the opportunities that the Lord has placed us here. I love Chris's story because we see miracle after miracle. And now in every moment, he's, he's saying, look what the Lord has done. Don't miss out, God, just, not just because he did a work in me, but don't miss out on what the Lord has every day. When we wake up and we see the sunrise and, and we're able to look at it in its beauty and say, God, thank you so much for this day. Let me be about what you would have. God, give me those interactions that I need to have. God, give me, put me in positions to speak your name and to speak all that you have. Let me not miss what you are doing. Let, let me not miss your presence in the moment. Don't let me get so distracted. Let me live each day living out that purpose that you've called me to. Every moment and every day. See, our family was, in 2022, our family learned about the brevity of life. My mother-in-law, Mary, was one that lived every moment to the max. In fact, there were times that I would drop off uh, Emlyn at their house on a Wednesday morning and her octave was way up here. I didn't even know anybody could get in that kind of pitch and tone saying good morning and it was piercing. But in those moments, I'm like, how do you have this much energy? You just woke up like 13 minutes ago and yet you have that energy. It's like the Energizer Bunny. There was no off switch to her. But in that, she lived every moment to its fullest. She lived life to the fullest. And, and she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And in January, on January 14th of this last year, she passed away from that. But that's not where the story ends. See, what I love about, about her life is though she lived every day to the fullest, and at some point in time toward the end, either in December or in January, she came and had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, though, so her story didn't end then. She's now being able to live life to its fullness in heaven because she's spending an eternity there with heaven. Though it's been an incredibly hard last eight and a half months, we have the hope. We have this hope that she is spending eternity in heaven with Jesus. Because life is just a vapor. We can, we can fill it all with other, these things or we can say, God, here I am. Show me where you're at work. God, let me live my life to the fullest. Let every moment count so that others can interact with you. So that others can have that encounter. What are we doing with the day. What are we doing with this life that we've been given? In James 4, 14, as we just read, what is your life? What, what is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. But I love that this scripture doesn't just stop there. I love that this scripture doesn't just stop there because if we read on to the next verse in verse 15, it gives us the solution. It says, yes, you're, you're only here for a moment. Yes, your life is, is just a mist or a vapor and it's gone soon. But then it says, but instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this, that. 
the, the will of God is what we need to center our life around. The will of the Father is what we need to do. That's what needs to be the catalyst for our planning. That's what needs to be going through our minds when we're, when we're looking at what's coming up next or what we're going to plan. It's saying, I want to live in the will of God. I may not totally understand it. It may not make sense. It may not be fun, but I want to be right in the midst of his plan and will for my life. I love that Jesus himself, the son of God, was so focused on being in his father's will that even in the garden, what do do we know the story? It says he prayed and said, God, if there's, Father, if there's any way that this cup can pass from me, God, let it happen because I know what I'm about to face. I know the death that I'm about to walk in. I know the punishment. I know the brutality of what I'm about to walk into. And he says, Father, if there's any way that this cup can pass from me, let it be so. But God, don't let it be clouded up by my will. But Father, let your will be done in my life so that I can bring honor to you. So I love that verse 15 says, no, whatever we what we should be saying is if the Lord wills that's going to focus my days if the Lord wills that's going to direct my path whatever the Lord wills I'm going to walk in that a couple months ago I, after having a conversation I wrote down a line on my dry erase board in my office And it's been a constant reminder to me to look at each day as a gift from the Lord, to look at each moment and each circumstance and each thing that pops up on my calendar or in my day as an opportunity. And that one line is this, it's divine appointment versus inconvenience. Divine appointment versus inconvenience. Living in the the, the will of God, God's will is saying, am I looking at each thing in my life as a divine appointment or as an inconvenience? Whenever the speed bumps come along your ways, whenever we're walking along and something happens, are we saying, God, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak into these lives. Or are we saying, man, this is an inconvenience that I'd rather be walking down this path. Or man, if that didn't happen, I would be further on in life. Or I would, I would be able to do what I was planning on doing. See, when we're truly living in the will of God, the Father, we will start looking at things as not just happenstance or not just coincidence, but we'll say, God, you know, that, that might be a little inconvenient, but I know that it's your part of your plan that you place this. And God, show me what you're doing in my life. God, show me the, give me the words to say. God, give me the opportunity to speak into these lives and not just see it as an inconvenience, that bump in our day. What I love about this is it's a constant reminder. There's been time and time again in my life that little inconveniences have paid huge dividends in my life. You may see it as a, as a flat tire or, or a tire that needs to be air and I gotta wait for the air compression to full fill up and then I gotta put air on my tire. But there's been multiple times in my very own life that because I was delayed in something, I missed out on whether it's a wreck or I got to the, the, somewhere in the right time when the Lord said, hey, I've got something in store for you. Are we looking at things as divine appointments or are we seeing just and focusing on just the inconveniences? In 1 Peter 1, verses 24 and 25, it says, all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. What does it say right there? Things are going to fade. Things are going to break. Things are going to go out of style. That new phone that you just think we have to have, it's going to go out of style. It's going to break. It's not going to work anymore. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord stands the test of time. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Lord doesn't expire. It doesn't go bad. His word and his truth are good wherever we find ourselves at today. We can trust that. We can rest in that. 
We can put our hope in that. We can look at each day as, as a reminder of saying, you know what? Today is gonna pass away, but the Lord is good. He has given me this opportunity. Today is, is rough. It's been a brutal day, but the Lord has given me the opportunity. The Lord has given me this plan. The Lord has given me this chance to be about his will and to point people to him. Yeah, there's gonna be hiccups along the way. But the Lord says, here, here is an opportunity. Are you gonna make the most of that? Are you gonna allow yourself to get so distracted? It's kind of comical that this morning, I was not feeling it. The Lord woke me up at 2.25 this morning and, and I could not go back to sleep, so I just started praying and started studying and reading and, and, and then I got up here and my head was about to explode this morning. I was thinking, God, today's not starting off very well. I don't know how I'm gonna make it, God. I don't know how I'm gonna have the energy to, to make this day. I'm worn out, I'm tired. And I started looking at things and then the Lord slapped me around and said, but you're awake. You've been given this day. You've been given this opportunity to be about my plan and my purpose and my kingdom. So don't miss that opportunity. The Lord had to slap me around a little bit. In fact, I, got, I had to leave the auditorium a couple times just because I wasn't feeling great this morning. But the Lord says, don't let any of that stuff cloud. And I don't say that to pat myself on the back, but the Lord was walking me through that this morning saying, don't miss out on an opportunity. Today is that gift. Today is that opportunity to be about what he has for us. What are we gonna do with it? I love this, this image that's on the bulletins and, and, and around this today. This every moment and every day. I love this image because it's a reminder to say, you know what? There are gonna be hiccups along the way. There are gonna be those rough moments. There's gonna be these hard times. But today is the day that the Lord has made. I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. I'm gonna say that again because I feel like somebody needs to get a little bit excited about that fact. Today is the day the Lord has made. It's not by fluke or by accident. He has made today and given us this day to walk in to be about his business. What are we gonna do with it? I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. Church, we have the opportunity to live a life that is a loud life, to live life out loud. It's a song that we sang at the very beginning of the service this morning, but we have this opportunity to, to live a life all about his kingdom and his purpose and his plan every day we wake up. I'm only 38 years old, and more mornings than it used to be, I wake up and moans and groans are the first thing that come out of my mind or my mouth, and my mind. I start to ache a little bit more. But instead of focusing on that, what would change in our day if we got out of our, our bed and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day. Because you didn't have to wake me up, but God, thank you for giving me another day. Show me what you have me do today. Instead of groaning and complaining about how how bad we slept or, or whatever, saying, God, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for giving me another 24 hours to be about what you have called me to be. And then we walk it out. How would our lives change? What would be different? What impact would we have in our circles and those around us if we started living life in that every moment, every day mentality, saying, God, you've blessed me with this. I'm gonna be all about you today. I'm gonna be that annoying person and just point people to you constantly because today is a day that you've made and I'm gonna walk in it. And I want others to join me because I have experienced your goodness and your faithfulness. So what are you gonna do with today? I didn't say, what are you gonna do tomorrow or this week? What are you gonna do with today? We're not promised another moment. I hope we have several more moments down the road, but what about today? 
What's the Lord calling you to do and you've put off and put off and put off? What do you need to say yes to him today? And finally say, God, I'm gonna stop putting this off and here I am. You can have all of me. I don't wanna miss out on another minute of all that you have in store. Here I am, Lord. Maybe you've been clinging to that calendar too much. Maybe you've been sitting there and, and, and focusing on all the wrong things and seeing things as inconveniences instead of just embracing what the Lord has. May today that change. May today be the day you say, God, I'm gonna walk every moment and every day focused on you and let you direct my path. Because the noise of the world's gonna get loud. But God, you've got a perfect plan. And I'm gonna follow you with everything that I have and not miss out on you. We you bow your heads, close your eyes. Maybe you've been just living life, trying to manufacture it, trying to live it to the fullest, but you've never said yes to Him. I tell you. Saying yes to him will give you a purpose and give you that hope and give you the opportunity to to wake up and say, thank you, Lord. Whatever it is, may we not put it off. One more moment. May we say yes to him. Yes, Lord, I'll go talk to that person. Yes, Lord, I will go love on that family. Yes, Lord, I will give that money out of my wallet even though I had a different idea with that. Yes, Lord, I will put my pride aside and go apologize to that individual. Whatever it is, let's not wait another moment. Don't let another moment pass by without saying yes to him. Jesus, we are so grateful. God, I thank you for this moment. God, I thank you for waking us up today so that we can be about what you have called us into. God, we thank you that God, you're faithful and you're good. And God, we thank you that you're able to do miracles to still today. So Jesus, we celebrate you in this place. We celebrate you in what you're doing. Father, right now I pray that if there's one in this room that God has not relinquished control of their life to you, that today would be the day that they would not waste another moment. God, whatever it is that we're putting off, God, may we see today and this hour and this moment as what you've called us into. May we live a life of purpose and may we live a life according to your will. God, we thank you so much for who you are. We love you and praise you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you stop at the tables and grab some invites and invite everybody you know to Fall Fest. Thank you so much. You're dismissed.